Today we're going to talk about the Wonderware Alarm Advisor. You know, if we go into a control room and sometimes we see operators sit there, automatically acknowledge alarms without even thinking about it. There's a lot of alarms that are just nuisance alarms that, you know, come every couple minutes and the operator says, ah, that's just an alarm that I don't need to worry about. That's That comes all the time. You know, in that situation, you know, if an operator is automatically acknowledge alarm and not taking the alarm seriously, when a true process upset comes along or a true critical alarm when they need attention comes along, you know, they might miss it they, because they're overloaded with all these nuisance alarms. So that's what the Wonderware Alarm Advisor is, the ability to kind of help the process engineers and the technicians sort out what alarms are real, sort out what alarms are causing nuisances, and give them visibility to go out and fix some of these problems and fix some of the process issues associated with these alarms associated with uh, the system out there. You know, here's a couple examples on the screen where, you know, the, the Texas City Refinery, an example where, you know, the operator lost control. They did have some alarms. Looking back, they did have some alarms. If they truly took the correct action, these things could have been avoided. So it's just some examples of some things that happened out there in the past because of poor alarm management. So if we look at, you know, what Alarm Advisor is, it's basically a tool that goes out and collects alarms from your SCADA system. You know, we as the Wonderware can connect to the InTouch alarm databases, the WWALMDB, the newer Orchestra alarm database, the A squared alarm database. So we automatically have the hooks into those databases. We can bring some of that data into the Alarm Advisor. Alarm Advisor will do some crunching on those numbers and those alarms and give you some reporting and say, hey, these are the alarms that are causing problems. These are alarms that are happening very frequently. These are alarms that are uh, one event causes another set of alarms. So a bunch of tools we have out there to analyze the alarms to give you better visibility of what's going on with the system. Here's an example of one of the dashboards that comes with the Alarm Advisor. With that, we'll start taking a look at a live demo of the Alarm Advisor and uh, go from there. So in order to get the Alarm Advisor up and running, we need to install the software, of course, and then we need to run the Wonderware configurator and then we need a couple services here that we need to, to configure. We first configure the advisor service, right? We tell it what port we're going to connect to. We tell it where our alarm database is going to reside. If we don't have the alarm database already configured, we can say create database. It'll automatically create that alarm advisor database for us. So that's kind of the first step that we need to do to get things going. The next portion is we need to configure the web service tells us what port we're going to connect to, and this is the URL that we're going to connect to to run the alarm utility. It's basically a web-based utility. This is where we're going to tell it to point to that alarm database that we previously connected to. The next thing we need to configure is the Wonderware collector. We need to point it to our data sources where we're going to get the alarm information. In this case, we're pointing it to the A-squared alarm database. That's the database that gets automatically created when we install system platform it's where all the alarms get dumped into. So I can browse to any database I have in my system. In this case, it's the A squared alarm database. I can define my priorities here, what priority levels I want to have associated with what alarm levels. So when I do reporting, it can report alarms based on different priorities. So from that, let's take a look at some of the reports and things that alarm management gives you. So what we're showing here is one of the first pages in the alarm advisor uh, dashboard, if you will. It gives you the ability to kind of give a quick glance of the status of your alarms. I can look at alarm severity distribution. How many alarms are in the distributions that we looked at when we're doing configuration, critical high, medium, and low over a certain time period? Right, what last week, how many alarms did I have last week? Uh, how many alarms did I have this week in those areas? Uh, I also can break it down by different areas of my plant. Right, I can break it down to uh, op alarms per operator. I can break it down to alarms by different areas, say my reactors or my tank farms. Also another example of my severity distribution based on different time frames. So that's the dashboard, if you will. I can build these dashboards and display what I want to display about my alarm distribution systems. I think the power of the alarm advisor is really in the analysis, right? So one of the things I can go look at is I can go look at the total number of alarms and I can go pick my time horizon, right? I can go pick Right now, I'm looking at this time horizon from July to September. And it's going to go through and it's going to look at the alarm distribution, how many alarms I have in that time frame. And you can see the color is the 
different severity levels. It gives me a little chart over here of the severity levels of the alarms. So I can pick any time horizon I want just by dragging this bar at the top. I go from some May until July. I can kind of define what I want there. And I'll go re repopulate the database and redraw my chart based on that time horizon. <clears throat> I can put all kinds of filters on here, right? I can put some filters on my alarm right now. I'm getting all my alarms. I can add different filters. I can say I want the last, you know, two months worth of data. It's going to go pull the data from the last two months. I think the other tool that's very popular is uh, the ability to go through and look at the frequency of alarms. I think this is the most powerful tool where let's go find the bad actors out there. Let's give Go find out the alarms that are causing the operators to acknowledge those alarms very frequently. You know, so if I look at the frequency of these alarms and I pick my time horizon top, I can go see what alarms are actually causing the problem. Right. So right now, if I hover over this, it's going to tell me that my React level is giving me, you know, it happened 21,000 times in the time frame that I have selected. My React temperature is giving me the same type of alarm situation. You know, my tank level. So right on down the line gives me this Pareto. Let's go take a look at where I have the alarm problems. I can filter it by area, filter it by operator, those types of things to see what alarms are causing problems out there in the process. The next tool I have here is something called standing alarm. These are alarms that are been on for a long period of time. You know, it might be days, months, years even. But this will tell us what alarms are constantly on. They need to go take some action and fix some of these problems with these alarms. In this case, it's telling me this React level has been on for an average of 16 minutes. In the real world, that might not be a lot, but in our demo scenario, that, that's a lot of time, right? So it's going to go through and tell me what alarms have been on for the most amount of time. So I can go out there and you know, help understand what's going on, filter some of this data so my operators have good data when an alarm comes in, they can actually take some real action. Next type of chart I have here is something called a fleeting alarm. Fleeting alarm is alarms that are, say, nuisance alarms coming in very frequently. Apparently, there's no alarms in my time horizon I have chosen in this category, so I'm going to look over a greater period of time to see if I can find some fleeting type alarms. So there we go. So we have some fleeting alarms. You know, it's telling me that I have this react temperature, and the average duration is only six seconds. So these are alarms that maybe we need to put some debounce timers on or do some filtering on in system platform to minimize the nuisance of the alarms that your operators are getting here. The next tool we have here is look at consequence types of alarm. You know, what happens when a certain alarm conditions, what other alarm conditions happen at the, around the same time? So if I look here, if I look at my storage tank, when my storage tank comes in, I also get these alarms, kind of a cause and effect or the first out type alarm. So when the storage tank alarms, my React level happens about 33% of the time. So it gives you the ability to go through, maybe filter some alarms, do some things in system platform that we have to disable some alarms during certain conditions. So if we're getting alarms, say, during a shutdown or a startup, are they really alarms that the operator needs to look at? You know, maybe they're just alarms that happen because I'm in a shutdown or a startup condition. We have some new tools inside a system platform that allow us to define those different areas, those startup and shutdown conditions, and do some filtering so I'm not making my operator uh, aware of situations that normally happens when there is a startup or shutdown. We want to give the operator some things that is out of ordinary. He needs to take some action and give him the best tools he has to be able to maintain his processes safely. So that's a quick overview of the Alarm Advisor. I think it's a great tool. Anybody that has a control room environment where they have operators acknowledging alarms in their processes, it's a great tool to help analyze where the problem child is, what issues need to be resolved, so your operators, when they get those alarms, they truly take some valuable action and they're not wasting their time on nuisance types of alarms. Thanks for joining us today. Need to learn more about this and other in-source products? Check out our training tracks designed to guide you down your learning path for in-source products. Whether you're using a classic InTouch and Historian architecture or using System Platform, we have a track to help you get the most out of your software investment. To register or learn more, click the link in the video description below.
Thanks for watching this in-source video.